Welcome to Country Stitchers. Hello, Frost friends. I'm Hello. Liz. Hello. Hi, I'm Deb. <laughs> and we have had an incredible week. Yeah, we're having a good week. And we actually fit yeah. in this time between all that's been going on with Country Stitchers <laughs> and the fair, yeah. which is in its third day? Second day. Second day. Second, Second day. day. Yep. So we're going to yep. stitch a little today and visit. Yes. And yes. Logan showed his pigs yesterday. And he did well. He got second he and fourth. So tonight is the um, the beef show, and then tomorrow's the sale. Yeah, oh, busy, busy, busy. And it's been nice weather. Last year, you might remember us oh, talking man. about the mud, and I didn't even get there. And this year, it's in yeah. the 70s and low 80s, yeah. and sunny. It's not raining. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I just glanced out to make sure it still wasn't raining, but yeah, it's not. It's nice. Yeah, good, good deal. Ooh, so we we're gonna stitch a little. We are, and we started our week this week at um, Hodgepodge. Yes, that was fun. You Thanks to everybody who came out to see us. Yes, and sign up for the stitch retreat day. The day treat. Day treat. Yes. Yep. And we um, do, insofar as we know, have two spots still available okay. for the day treat. So um, you can call Hodgepodge if you're interested to register, and anytime between now and October twenty. Night. Well, that's the actual day. Yes. So. <laughs> but we're, we're kidded, so I mean, I would think anybody could register right up until. Okay. What'd you think? Okay. I think. <laughs> Marsha might think differently. Sorry, Marsha, if you do. She said so. <laughs> you tell them what said they could. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. A lot it of people fun. came through the oh my store. Gosh. I'm so excited because it'll, it'll just be such a great day to get to really know all of you that are coming for the day treat, you know, to sit down and chit chat and. That's just so much fun. Yep. Oh my goodness. And we actually, it wasn't planned on Fran's part, but yeah. we met Fran from <laughs> North Carolina. She comes through here to visit family up yeah. in the northern part, well, central Pennsylvania. And she happened to stop here and we she were She was there. so sweet. She spent hours with us. She oh my did. gosh. Yeah. We got to know her. She's... Fran, yeah. pull up a chair. Yeah. We're stitching. <laughs> <laughs> so sweet. Yeah. And, and oh, we met. Fun. We and met. what a great husband she has because we she was seriously with us for hours. That poor guy. I mean, I don't Scott, even know what he did. Yeah, Scott for was hours, running. but well, way he, to go, Scott. Yeah, he Good likes job. to he likes to look for I think she said old car parts yeah. and he does yeah. um reconstruction. Yeah. Uh, motors, cars, whatever. Yeah. So I think he was busy with his interests and mm -hmm. And he did call her though, like after yeah, four o'clock, the phone rang, and <laughs> he's we're... probably thinking, "Did you get lost? <laughs> Are you still there?" But that was fun, and we got to learn about Fran, and then we met um, Sandy and Sandy and oh gosh, lots Linda, of people, yeah. and I'm gonna leave people out. I know. I was say we, it, at, there were just people coming through, and it was so much fun. Yes, it was and fun. Thank you. We're looking forward to our day, day treat. treat where we get mm -hmm. to get know everybody a little bit more yes and then we'll also we're going to be at stitches unlimited yes in october yes and that's exciting um because she also has two trunk shows going on while we're while we're there she'll have two trunk shows going on yep um and now that i said that i'm trying to think of the date and kathy awful? Berg. oh 21st i think it is let me look uh, on my i have my calendar here let okay me check. all right and i'll check on but, that day treat but anyway too. that'll be fun when we're over at stitches unlimited um, it will yeah. It is on our last Dropbox, um, oh, okay. on our video, all the dates of our visits at shops and also the day treat information. Okay. But right. I will query I'll show that you what I'm working out. on while she's looking at that. I decided to get my folk children um, ready to go so I can get those stitched up. I'm going to start with the boy. And um, I'm doing it on 40 count water green is the color of the fabric. It's a very, very pretty fabric. Because um, this will look really pretty in my bedroom. Forget everything so. I said. It's a 17. I thought so. And stitches unlimited. Wait, you should have said Liz, it's a 17. <laughs> well, I just knew the 21st <laughs> did not sound right. <laughs> yes, you'd have been there a little late for the event. Yeah. Whoops. And let me check on our day treat is the 29th. Okay, yes, that one the day I was, treats the 29th. That one I was right about. Yes. Oh, and I can show you those too. Yes, this will be fun. Yeah. Um, so for the day treat, if you would like to come, and also if you just love this design and you want to stitch it, you're more than welcome to give Marsha a call at HodgePodge, and she can uh, order it for you. She can kit it up for you and send it out your way. Yeah, some ladies who were in yesterday can't make the event, but mm -hmm. they like the project and yeah. the models they got to see, and so they, they left with the pattern and the... Yeah. So it's a Lucy Beam 
um, Love and Stitches pattern called Leaves Fall. And it's by Rebecca Nolan. That's the pattern. She's a Pennsylvania lady. Yeah? Yeah. Cool. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Her and Kathy. And yeah, Kathy then, is too. Kathy um, Derrick is. And then the, yeah. what was the other designer? Okay, that, so. That's sort of that group. Um, I'll show you our. <laughs> that was intentional. I felt the love. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I felt a lot more love. <laughs> All right, so. Um, if you come to the class, or again, if you want to call Marsha and have it kitted up, we are stitching it on oh, vintage, vintage country, country mocha. mocha. Thank you. I always want to call it something different. And Liz did hers on the um, Ada to show count. you. Yeah, 14 count Ada, and I did mine on 32 count linen. Uh, so this is Liz's, and her, bless her heart, she had a very, 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 very crazy busy Yes. Time lately. My daughter um, and her so, family were moving and yeah. they all stayed here last week for the week and I didn't get this. Lots going on. Finished. But she got it all stitched, so kudos to you. Thank Good you. job. Yes. Thank you. Um so this is Liz's finish. And um it's beautiful. She did change it a little bit. There's there's um in the design there's an acorn on each side. Liz put one acorn on this this side closest to me. And she also did some specialty stitches in that acorn. Just to show you that yes, if you're stitching on Ada, you still can do some specialty stitches. Doesn't mean you can't. Um, the leaves, Liz decided to add one more color to the design. It's not called for, but it's actually called Autumn Leaves, it right? It is, yes. And it's a pretty color. And, and it's also a gentle art sampler thread. Yeah, and Marsha will have that available if you want to if you want to get that also. And it does look very pretty with this design. So we decided to add that in as well. That's Liz's finish. And, um. Oh, and I changed the thread colors on the written statement. Oh, yeah. I pulled the mulberry instead of using it on the leaves, I pulled it into the word leaves and then used the autumn leaves for the leaves. Yes. So Debs will be yes. all sable. Is it sable? Uh, I think it, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah, sable. Okay. Up at the top, I see it. Okay. So this is my finish. Um, I have to go closer. I think our lighting is a little much up there. But um, this is my finish on 32 count. And I also used the color that, that Liz wanted to use. I kind of blended my, um, my leaf. I started with the mulberry and then I just slowly blended it in with that other color to kind of make it look like a leaf was actually changing its color. And then what I did was I added two extra leaves to the pattern stitched over one. So, and that is such a neat addition to that. Well, thanks. I love it. So this leaf here, over one, is I actually stitched mine over one. <laughs> <laughs> you copied me. <laughs> I just got you that. You had to think about I that. I did. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this leaf here is actually, yeah, this leaf here, just over one. So I just kind of flipped them, and then I also stitch my acorn a little differently. I used the sable at the bottom in satin stitches. I did the dark green color at the top over one, but then I also did a basket weave stitch on top of the green in the sable color. And um, if you were there at um, HodgePodge, I know I had someone very interested in that stitch and when she comes to the class I'd be more than happy to not class I keep calling it a class when she comes to the day treat I'd be more than happy to kind of sit down with her Liz can show the it's stitch okay, that she daddy. used in her um, acorn yep and um, I can also you know help out with that too if anybody's interested yeah I used an so, elongated herringbone in the bottom and Smyrna on the top mm -hmm. Um, a lot yeah. of people think you can't, like you said, right. do especially stitches on Ada. You can. Yeah. It's a little more tedious. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You gotta play with the little blocks of thread, but you can yeah. do it. Yeah. Just like you can do fractional stitches on mm -hmm. Ada. Yep. Yeah. So. Just a little, little bit. It's different, but so anyway, same pattern. I am. <laughs> yeah. She's different. I am. <laughs> She's special. <laughs> um, same pattern, but completely different looks, which I think is awesome. Yep. And then I just did my um, pillow. I did the the way that uh, Kathy. Um, Haberman shows you from hands where, on design. Yes, she stitches around the whole outside first and then um, picks up the back of it, does a little snip, and then you actually stuff it from that and then you can cover up. I, I didn't get anything special done back here yet. I want to get a tag that says handmade by Deb or something, but 
that's a kind of neat way to do it um, so you don't have to worry about getting your corners perfect or finishing sewing your seam together you can just do a quick ladder stitch to stitch up the back of that and put something cute over top of it and it gives you the same access to all four corners yeah. when you're stuffing it whereas if you work your way down those two corners are really high up in the long pillow yeah I like it too I think it's a great way to finish I do too and it's the fun. patch just kind of adds a little homespun touch to the back of it yeah because you can get really different with that patch too yep. and do all kinds of different fun things yep you know different shapes mm hmm yeah I think on one of the pillows um, then we cut it out using a heart mm -hmm. or something like that yeah 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 it was a heart yeah that was fun yeah I am busy working on our homework speaking <laughs> of Kathy and hands-on design thank you Kathy for the homework um, I'm gonna give her detention soon if she doesn't finish her homework <laughs> I know and we have a group that gets together at the retreat we are so excited it's coming up but we we're all comparing notes on our homework last night and it yeah. was so funny yeah. oh my gosh it was funny so we're going to be going to salty yarns in Ocean City Maryland um, second weekend of October is mm -hmm. it and uh, that'll be the Jamboree so it's completely full I'm excited to go and see everybody um, that's what Liz is trying to finish up yep. <laughs> one of our classes Kathy Haberman we have homework for her yeah. And then we have two other classes, which we did not get homework in. Mm -mm. So, And you might already have seen, if you've been watching our videos as they come out, you've seen Deb's finish on her homework. Um, she's got hers done. <laughs> but um, I'm going to do tent stitch like Deb suggested she did on her ornaments um, on the last two. But I had already started the border on this one in full stitches, so I'm just going to keep it going until I mm -hmm. finish. I'm almost yep. through with the first one. And I did take a you know sneak peek at the other ones. They're not that... I think this one had more solid stitch on it than like solid color. Seemed to me anyway. I started with the bigger one. I figured from there it got diminishing yeah. returns and it would go easier. Hi, Ivan. <laughs> We're Hi. at home and my husband just said hello in the doorway. And Ivan just came in. Hi, if you buddy. see his tail wag up oh. there, you go. <laughs> Get her all wet. Yes. There's the tail. Take a break, buddy. Okay. Take a break. All right. Um, so as we're sitting here stitching with our friends, let's go through a few, I don't know, comments and sure. questions and things like that. That'd be fun. Do you want me to start so you can actually do some stitching? Sure, if you want to. <laughs> Pick matter. up your needle. I don't know, you have homework to finish. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't be stitching at all. <laughs> oh, no, wait, that is my homework. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, some good homework to have. It is, actually. It's just, I actually was working on two other things. I have to show them. You stitch a minute. I'll show the two other things I was working oh, on. Oh, okay. Because it was fun. I got a whole minute. Yeah. All right. Yeah, well, you know me. I'm a little more winded than that. <laughs> I could probably go longer if you want. Um, you had seen these. Um, my little Halloween pattern oh, for yeah. the pumpkin. I really would like to finish this little black bird. I know. It's so cute. But I haven't gotten much farther. I got started on the bird while we were at... Um, oops. While we were, <laughs> my lap does not have bumpers on it. Um, while we were at Hodgepodge, I started working on this while we were talking, and oh my goodness, I pulled out more than I actually stitched because I kept <laughs> stitching and talking. But this one is the one that I'm really having fun with. It goes on a spool. It's by my lady's needle. My lady. Gloria Moore, and she did a class at the Jamboree. Um, goes back a couple years. Mm -hmm. And I thought it would be fun to take this and have it sitting on my table this year and actually have it be finished. <laughs> so I think I showed you this guy not too long ago. Oh, thank you. Them. Yep. Um, that's what it'll look like if you did it that way, but instead. I put a cauldron with bubbles in the middle, <laughs> and I used um, some petite Mill Hill beads Aww. and did the bubbles to match in the colors Cute. of the of the design. And then Sorry, hold on. that meant then that I didn't put the little tree with the pumpkins in the center. So what I'm going to do behind the second witch is put a pumpkin um, with okay. a little face on it as Ooh, the last cool. thing instead of the kitty cat. And that way, um, it won't be 
a mirrored look. It'll yeah. actually be different yeah. all the way around. Yeah. So anyway, I, all I have to do teeny tiny and it goes onto a spool then. Yep. Wraps all I have to do is wraps do around that. a spool. And yeah. then I have a thread that I used before on Halloween things. We used it on our name tag one year for Lottie Da, Deb and I. Um Oh, I love this one. You remember that? Yeah. And um, I had picked it up yeah. one time I mean, just because I loved it. It is so, so pretty. I'm going to use that for my nun stitch oh, good. on this piece. Yeah, cool. So I think it'll look really cute and with it's, this, especially the gray. Oh, in yeah. It. That's beautiful. And it's called Witching Hour. And yep. it's a silken color. I don't know if you want to hold it against that, if it'll show up better on something or... Maybe. I don't know. But that's, the, what, that's what I'm going to do the nun stitch in instead of the copper... Um, which is what they had originally done. Yeah, it's really, really pretty. I love this one. I forgot about that. So it'll be, it'll be a little different. Yeah. And I don't have very much to go, just the pumpkin. Um, I was going to say, it looks like it's almost finished. Yeah, just the nun stitch and the pumpkin. Sweet. Yep. That's what and I was doing. it'll sit right next I to me. should have been doing my homework. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, so that was fun. Did you get sidetracked? I, well, I guess. If that's true, then I'm always sidetracked. I was going to say. <laughs> But I also thought, <laughs> and wait till you see it, wait for it, wait for it. Yeah. I haven't figured out how I'm going to do it yet, but wouldn't this be cute somewhere in the mix of our homework, only I'm not sure where? Uh, you think it's not the right hue? No. Okay. No, not with this bright. The bright purple? Yeah. All right. Because it, it does have the mm -hmm. same sort of palette of green purple orange like the homework does but mm -hmm. it's very more of a primitive look yeah. than a bold. I like it with the fabric. I just don't like it with the other bright colors. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty. The mice wouldn't look good in that either. Uh -uh. <laughs> we had a running joke last night with the mice. <laughs> that was fun too. We've had so much fun. Uh, what if Leela ever found her mice? I don't know. <laughs> one of our one of our friends <laughs> We were talking, and, and one of our friends said, I'm done with all but the mice on her homework. And she didn't get her homework done one year, so she was really, you know, excited about that. Well, then one of the ladies said, what mice? Yeah. What are you guys stitching? <laughs> and she didn't remember the little mice on the homework. Well, that generated a long line of comments. That was so funny. It was. <clears throat> But then I ran across something in my patterns, and you won't believe this, but remember this pattern? I wanted to wait till fall to do it. What? From Cricut Club. Oh, yes. Shirt. Yeah. I pulled it out last night. We talked about yeah. this last year. This is I so found beautiful. This. I love this one. I saw it on Stitching Dream, Stitching the Dream uh, Floss Tube channel about a year ago and ordered it when I saw it. Yeah. And then I got the alternate pumpkin that she had put in it from Vicki Hastings. She had put out a pumpkin as a free pattern quite a long time earlier, like three years earlier. Oh, okay. And so she was kind enough to send me that pattern nice. to alternate. And so this pattern with the white pumpkin will actually have a pumpkin with multiple colored leaves on it in the center. So that would be fun. So cool. <laughs> That's good kiss. Yeah, giving kisses to another girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. Giving kisses to yeah, another of girlfriend. Uh oh, we're probably shaking the camera. <laughs> I know. Back. Uh, I Take know. your tail back. I know, buddy. Here, buddy. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> we guys get to go for the ride. Yes. Too. Yeah, there you he go. He has How's a that? very strong tail. Oh, but those of you who have been around lab, that's how they <laughs> propel themselves in the water. Oh, my gosh. I, oh, here, buddy. it's okay, buddy. <laughs> Oh, he's so excited. I, I know. know. He just loves having me here. Can you come over here and lay down? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, they use that tail to propel themselves, and it is very strong. Yes, it is. Yeah, All right. So anyway, that was one of the... I, I love me. that one. That is so pretty. Do you have fabric for that yet? I forgot. Did you just say no, that? No, that's why I was thinking if I take it along on our retreat, yeah, I might pull out some fabric while we're down there that I find that I like. And then... I pulled this out the other day. I was telling you about this. Um, it's a pattern by... We're doing show and tell. Manny Dudana. Oh, okay. It's the Blue Quaker Sewing Basket. And I just absolutely That's love beautiful. that. Yeah, it's so pretty. And I got quite a far... Quite a far piece. <laughs> cut for a piece on it. <laughs> got a long way. This is... There's only two colors, right? That's it, yes. And it, it is so pretty. so different than two colors. Yeah. But I started this on one of our retreats. And Beautiful. so I thought, 
Maybe I ought to pull it back out to work on a little bit more. But I have half I the band done. I just have these to, colors. Excuse me. Have to do the other half. Love these I'm colors good. together. It's dungarees and mustard seed are the yeah, two colors. That is beautiful. So these will be fun. That is so pretty. And I was telling Wouldn't that look sharp around the spool also? Oh yeah. I like that. It's really pretty. Well, don't tell me. <laughs> I like that. It'll also look good around like a tuna can, which you make a <laughs> sewing kit. So, uh, actually, one of the kits that I bought, or patterns I bought, actually uses a tuna can, six ounce tuna can, as the <laughs> base for their construction. I thought that was cute. Anyway, so those were the things. The two that I was working on when I shouldn't have been were the pumpkin. Well, when I shouldn't should. have been. <laughs> <laughs> There's that word. <laughs> were the pumpkin and the. Um, we have no rules. We don't like stitching rules. No. No, no. Pumpkin and... What? Oh, the spool. I was trying to think oh, of the two okay. things I'd been working gotcha. on. I just showed them to him. Gotcha. Gotcha, so, gotcha, gotcha. Now you got one stitch um, in. Did you get one? Uh, three. Oh, wow. Woo! <laughs> I'm actually ahead. We heard from um, Anna, and she said she was able to get that alphabet book that I showed. Oh, good. Uh, the Better Homes and, and Gardens alphabet book. And she went on eBay and got it for four dollars. Yep, I looked it up. I almost Sweet. ordered it, and then I thought, why am I ordering this? I know someone who has it. Yeah. So I didn't buy it, but I did. Yeah. I double checked it, and it. And the only thing about it, for me, was that the cheaper versions of it were hardback. They weren't the softback cover that you had. Oh. But you could get it in the softback, but that was actually more expensive it was than the hardback. Really? Mm -hmm. Yep. It was a newer release, oh. so I guess maybe that made a difference. You know, what I just thought of. Hmm. Wouldn't that be a good book? to do that binding yeah. thing, that would be great. Yeah, you know what, I think I might have to do it with that one. That's a great idea. Yeah. I forgot about doing that. Um, so A.R. Hunt, Ms. Mouse, mm -hmm. she wanted to know if we have any tricks for knots. Um, she does not use a hoop or a stand, and that might be that might be the problem there. But when she goes down like to push the needle down, mm -hmm. she's running into trouble. Because uh, she's probably letting off the tension. Um, Knots. Are you talking like about French, French knots? knots oh, I or thought you colonial meant, knots. Sorry. My head was saying you make knots while you're oh, stitching sorry. and need help undoing them. <laughs> That's what I thought. Okay, so doing French knots and colonial knots. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I do like Mary Corbett. Um, I do. I love her tutorials mm -hmm. for um, different stitches. I think she's fantastic. Yep. But. I think it would be hard to do either one of those if it wasn't in some kind of a hoop or a frame. For me, it would anyway. You said you can do the colonial knot? And the with... French knot without. What I do is I, when I hold it in my hand, I use my index finger to hold the working thread so the tension is there. Like, a, um, how do I describe it? Let me make one. Like for me, everything's on the top, so I have to hold my working thread to the side as I'm pushing my you know, needle back down through. Yes, and if you pull it with your thumb and pinch it with your index finger, do you know what I'm saying? Oh. Like this, pull it out to the extent that you want it. Like when your needle's in, pull your working thread over to the side so you have the tension that you need. Then go ahead and go straight down through. Hmm. And then you've got the tension against the bottom of the needle when you pull it down Okay, there. okay. That's how I do it. Okay, all I, right. I pinch the thread and fabric between these two fingers when I'm doing it. Cool. Um, but I, I guess, yeah, because you could use two hands to do them when you're using a frame, right? I do. That's, yeah. that's how I do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Double fisted. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Rebecca, she, <laughs> that was funny. She wants to know if I have a tanning bed. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope, those things scare me. Just no, just, uh. Tending those chickens every yeah. day in the summertime. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laying out in the meadow with Hank. <laughs> yeah. Oh, can we tell a story? Yeah. When my granddaughters were here, they. Oh, yeah. We were talking about a busy week. So, the week that. The twins and their older sisters were here. Um, Mom and Dad were busy doing stuff, and Rick was out. So I said to the big girls, let's take a ride over. Oh, no, no. 
she came to pick me up after the video. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah. I had to leave her <laughs> yeah. at my house. I got stranded on the porch. <laughs> yeah, because I had to go and get Logan from school. Yep. Yeah. And so yeah. I called Carrie, and Carrie drove the convertible over to get me, and the girls <laughs> wanted a convertible ride. That's what happened. Yep. They were after me to come over, though, and we were going to try to work that out, but it worked out well this way. Yeah. So she got there. Everybody piled out, and we were visiting the chickens first, and they used to have... Um, some free range chickens at their house, so that was fun for them. Then we went down towards the the cows, and everybody was on the far side of the fence. And Carrie said, "Oh, they're not close enough to pet." And I said, "Well, be careful of the fence." Mm -hmm. And I said, "And I'll call Hank." So I said, <laughs> "Hank, Hank, come! I got a milk bone, and I pulled one of my treats out of my pocket and held it up." <laughs> he looked, and he came trotting across that field to me with Dookie following yeah, along yeah. and Baxter just looking yeah. like, hmm? Was it Baxter? No. no uh, Memphis. Memphis. Yeah. Just looking like, what? Because Memphis never took a milk bone from me, but uh -uh. Dookie, Dookie took one right after Hank did. Oh, yeah. They're best friends. Yep. Yeah. And because um, he wouldn't take it that first yeah. day I met him, but he did yesterday yeah. or last week. But anyway, yeah. that was so funny. I, Hank remembered me and he came running right but up to me. But it's cute that he came running up to you, though. Yeah. That's cute. The girls were so impressed by that. Mama called Hank, and he came running. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't know you spoke cow. <laughs> I, I speak animal. <laughs> yeah, Carrie calls me the animal whisperer. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so we were definitely having some fun in your backyard. Yeah, well, that's good. I'm glad. Oh, and then they didn't like the pigs. They didn't like the smell of the pigs, right? <laughs> yeah, we started into the barn. <laughs> Casey said, Mama, what's that smell? I said, that would be the pigs. And it just gets a little stronger as you get closer. So we got in there, and they were in their flip-flops. So we were pointing out that they needed to be a little cautious of where they were walking. <laughs> didn't, she, didn't she say something like, you said, well, that's just that's just how the pigs smell. And didn't she say something like, every day? Yeah, yeah she did, all the time. Like, is that always there? Oh, that's funny. Uh, Casey's such a cute dude. Yeah, that was cute. Hi, everybody, by the way, down there in Florida. Yes, hi. Oh, my goodness. I hope they're having good weather. And I heard they've been to the beach. Sweet. That would be, like, first thing I'd want to do. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, stitching is my happy place. I think that's so cute. <laughs> she wanted to know, you showed some Bellagio silk. Uh-huh. Um, I don't know if it was in our last video or the one before that. But uh, she wanted to know, is yours, is your Gloriana silk the, how do you say it, Flormel silk? F-L-O-R-I? Flormel? Mm -hmm. Flormel silk? No. Okay. It's not. It's the stranded, 12-stranded silk. Um, not the, I think the Flormel is a twisted silk, and it's not that. It's the stranded silk. Okay. 12 strands. Okay. Because I guess... I, I do like that other silk, though, for certain things. It was one of the silks we were supposed to buy for the Jeanette Douglas Christmas sampler. On my my version, you did the oh, natural and yes. I did the white. And on my side, that was one of really? the ones. I bought two skeins of the green. Okay. Uh, the, yeah. <laughs> but. I'm like halfway finished that. I got to get that back out. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot about that one. Mm. Accentuate. Um, oh, and Debbie. She wanted to know, Debbie Ginger, she wanted to know where she can get a copy of the pattern that we're working on, the one for our day treat. Mm -hmm. um, she wanted to know if HodgePodge has a uh, online shop. She does not have an online shop, but you're more than welcome to give her a call, and Marsha will get that out to you. She'll even kit it up for you if you'd like. And should we go ahead and link the, the phone numbers again sure. under this video? We'll put we'll put all the local needle workshop okay. information under there. Oh, which yes. reminds me. What? Um... We also have been in touch with another one of our local needlework stores. It's a little farther out in our area than HodgePodge and Stitches Unlimited, um, but it's just cross-stitch. Carolyn DeLong is the proprietor. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Carolyn. And um, so we'll include her information about her shop down there, mm -hmm. too, because as you well know, finding a store within any kind of driving distance of you nowadays can be very difficult, especially if you're in a rural area. So we will get that in there, yeah. especially for our local Pennsylvania viewers. Yes. The ones who are near Philadelphia, they have kind of a, there's 
fireside stitchery and then also ye old stitches. I was going to say, somebody left a message and said the one the one that's in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. Baltimore. Yeah. Maryland? Crafters Corner. I don't know. I'm try I'll have to look at it again. But Needlecraft Corner, that's what it um, is. Hmm. Uh, Edwina Bang, she wanted to know, she said, Liz, do you take Ivan on retreats? Um, or does Deb become your service companion? <laughs> <laughs> Deb's always been my companion on a retreat. Um, I have taken Ivan, but the woman who raised Ivan as a puppy, um, her name is Linda. She loves to get visits with her puppies. Mm -hmm. um, so she is so sweet. She extends that uh, service of letting them come live with her whenever people are going to be on vacation or out of town. And it gives the dog a break, and it gives the people a break. Mm -hmm. So yep. I let uh, Linda know in advance when we have a need to work activity, and yeah. then Ivan goes and stays with Linda. Yes. He gets so excited. If he hears her voice on the phone, he still gets excited. Because <laughs> that's his mom for the first two years. Aww. He doesn't forget that. That's neat. But I did take him to one of our guild retreats one time. Mm -hmm. But I'm more than happy to do anything that Liz needs. Oh, yes. You do. You are above and beyond. Oh. We had a question about my magnet clips, which oh. I thought was funny because someone at Marsha's asked about them, too. Yeah. Um, they wanted to know um, where they were available. They said, I'm sure you get asked this, but she somehow couldn't locate it. But they're actually so readily available now when I first found them I could only find them on this site called better I hate to say this but it was like better living for seniors it was <laughs> that's where I found them and I thought oh and when I found them there they were only seven dollars <laughs> now they're mm. 20 what? and they're available in all your local needle workshops no not quite but you'll find them in the stores but staple sells them now um, Amazon, you can you can do a search on Amazon and find them there under several different vendors. And uh, who is the other place that comes up regularly? Staples, Amazon, their stores. I'm not sure. Um, not Michaels. Oh, they, they don't have them in um. Might have been that would Joanne's. be great if they did because you could use a coupon on those, couldn't yeah. you? Yeah. They have some clip-ons at AC Moore in our area, but they're made by a company called Carson's. And when they clip on, the, the lens that is in the clip-on goes all the way to the top of your glasses, comes straight across the frame. That's why I like these so much because they drop down and they become more of a bifocal view. Yeah. So my yeah. regular prescription, I can still see out the top, watch TV, look at anybody in the room, yeah. read my pattern at a distance, but then I yeah. have the the added strength at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, that's what I liked about those too. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where they are. Oh, and we had a bunch of people ask about in our last Floss Trans video the floor frame that I was using. Um Unfortunately, Liz and I do not have any information on that. Uh, Liz had bought that years and years and years ago and just is not sure of the make or model or name or anything. And there's nothing on the frame to tell us. No, I haven't been able to locate the invoice. No. Um, if I run across it, I will certainly let you guys know, yeah. but I haven't been able to. Yeah. Um, and also the magnifier that I had clipped on there. Oh my gosh, I absolutely love, love that magnifier. It is. Um, it says natural light on it. And we had, we had shown that in, in a few videos. It seems like every time that I have it, we get lots of questions about it. Um, it has a great base to it that, that holds a lot. Like it won't fly off your Q-snap or anything, or anything. It has a really neat um, clip mm -hmm. at the it's bottom. It's very deep. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it says natural light and we found them at different places like Amazon, Bed Bath & Beyond. The one at Bed Bath & Beyond is an, a, a different version. It's like a, a knockoff version. Okay. Um, but they also have... Um, trying to think. Overstock.com. That oh, was the other one I found okay. it at. 
but be careful of your prices when you're doing yeah. it because you'll see difference in all those prices. Yes. And it has a light in it also. Not It's not just a large magnifier, but it has a light. Uh, I was going to say it's battery powered, and then I thought, well, that's dumb. Of course it is. There's no <laughs> wire hanging off it. But I forgot you hadn't mentioned the light. So that's why I was thinking, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, but it's it's fantastic. I love it. I actually have two now because I just love them. I love them. I keep that one on my floor stand, and then I usually put one on my lap stand, too, when I'm mm -hmm. using it. Um, Janice. Hi, Janice. She wanted to know, when I have a piece um, that has a part of the design that is not showing up as much as I would like it to, and I decide to outline it, if I decide to backstitch it, do I use the color thread that is already in the design, or do I choose the DMC 3371, that, like, go-to backstitch color? Um, honestly, Janice, it all depends on the design. You know, um, when I did my leaves here, I wanted them backstitched to stand out a little bit more, and um, I did backstitch in that color the... Um, uh, what's that? Is it Merlot? Uh, what's the red color called? Do you remember what that's mulberry. called? Mulberry. Mulberry, okay. So I did backstitch in mulberry, but then down here towards the bottom of the leaf, where I wasn't using the mulberry, it's the um, autumn leaves color, I, I didn't... I did use exactly what it was next to. Whatever stitch was next to it, I used that color as a backstitch, if that makes sense. Um, it, but it just depends on the design. If I have a bunch of things that are backstitched in that dark brown color, then I'll just continue with that if I want to. Um, a lot of times, though, I will just finish it off with the color that is already in that specific motif. I just pulled out my scissors and realized I had something sitting here. I wanted to show Sandy Jerky. Oh, yeah? <laughs> huh. Sandy. Oh, your little... Yeah. This is the little fob I was telling you about at HodgePodge on Tuesday. It's my design. I used it teaching at our guild, teaching like people how to do peyote stitch. So uh, we were talking about things we might be able to share with her group that meets at the library in Exton. And I said we could certainly do something like that. Yeah. It'd be easy. And our group that goes to the retreat did these for fun mm -hmm. last year. Well, um, Willa and I drank wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were in the other you room drinking drink our wine. And just had luscious. <laughs> <laughs> they were in the next room. <laughs> I have no idea exactly what they were doing over there, but they were doing their wine for sure. <laughs> we'll never tell. But we were all sitting around. It was really funny because I thought, you know, I'd just give these out, and if anybody wanted to learn it, that'd be great. The ladies all gathered around the table in our dining room and said, okay, bring it on, bring it on. Yeah. We had like an hour and a half before the opening banquet. And, yeah. <laughs> and some of them were like almost three quarters of the way through. It was like, oh, this is fun. Did Sheila get hers done? Um, I'm trying to remember if she did or not. You know, I don't remember. Okay. I know Leela finished hers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember. I know Willa didn't finish hers. <laughs> nah. Nor did Deb. In <laughs> fact, Deb didn't do it at the Guild either. So I'm wondering if this is like boycotting hey, my I coyotes. Helped. You did, but you haven't tried it yet. I haven't seen you try it. Nah. Uh, she just keeps going, I like that pattern, Liz. Yep. yep. Let Liz do it. Liz does everything. That reminds me of that commercial. Mikey, you'll eat anything. Yep. That's exactly what was on my mind when I said it. Oh my gosh. That was so funny. <clears throat> mm, goodness. Oh, and hopefully you can hear us okay. Sorry about a few of you that were watching on your computer and couldn't hear us very well in the last video. We're we intentionally muffled our yeah. bakers. <laughs> no. What'd you say? <laughs> we're trying to yeah, it's speak a work in louder progress. today. Um, huh? <laughs> That's actually what brought Ivan into the room initially because we were laughing and he always comes when he hears people having a good time. He isn't going to get left out of the party. I had someone ask me, um, let me check who it was. Um, I was getting ready to start my thread and uh, Darlene, Darlene, I got your email and Darlene wanted to know she was using over-dyed thread. Mm -hmm. She wanted to know, um, she'd been watching people talk about starting their threads. She said, would you ever use a loop method on an over-dyed thread? And I told her to check out this video because we might talk about it. These two leaves on my pillow back here, one of them I did using two strands 
and then stitching every stitch as I went. Which one? Uh, this this one. one. Two strands every stitch as I went. And then I took my thread and I used one strand, folded it over, and did the loop method stitching back and forth. On the other one? On the other leaf. Okay. Um, I wanted to see what the overall difference was because one of our one of the classes I took where I did my grandma's heart class with Beth Seal, mm -hmm. um, I wanted to find out she had said she never stitches each stitch as she goes. She always stitches the I same way. Yeah. And she uses the loop method and uses one thread of overdyed. Yeah. She said the overdyed will still show the variation when you use it. And it does. It still shows the mm -hmm. variation. Yeah, it does. It's a little different when you mm -hmm. compare them yeah because you get a two-toned stitch on some of them yeah instead of the exact color of the whole stitch mm -hmm. so it gives kind of a almost mm -hmm. a more subtle I look think so, to the yeah. variation yeah so yeah because um, even you can see in this one you can tell the direction Liz stitched also you know you can see that she went this way with it so that's a really cool thing about that over dyed thread, you can do so many different things yes. with it. It's so fun. There's no rules. You just go for it. Yep. So in answer to your question, Darlene, if you're going to try to use the loop method using over dyed thread, if you're using two strands, then you're only going to use one strand of your over dyed thread and you're going to fold it. If you really want it to be the, the same and start it with the loop method, but you don't want to stitch you want to stitch each stitch as you go. Um, if you cut your thread in such a way that your top and bottom repeat, um, often that's what they do. They cut them in yard lengths, and the repeat of the overdyed is in the yard. That's why you cut two strands together if you're cutting them. And that might have gotten very muddled mentally, <laughs> but it, in my mind, I heard that going differently. Um, so. If you take it and you fold it, you'll just get a different look to your variation. Mm -hmm. But yes, there are people who do that and and people who still start with the loop method instead of fussing around. The other way you can do it, if you're working on linen uh, or Ada, I will add, because I did this on this pillow too. I, I wanted to have some things to, to share with people at our day tree about that model. I did the pin stitch to start the stitches okay. using the... Uh, over dyed thread mm -hmm. on Ada and most people think of using a pin stitch when you're stitching on linen you come in from the sides um, and it anchors your thread so you don't have to worry about running your thread behind it um, we have a video out where we talked about that and showed it there's also um, a demonstration I think on Mary Corbett's um, floss tube channel uh, YouTube channel that also does pin stitch so you can look it up, mm -hmm. um, but you can also do it with Ada as well as Lynn. Again, just stay between the threads. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that tells you what you wanted to know, Darlene. It wasn't just a lot of useless information. <laughs> um, Deanna would like to know where you usually buy your hand-dyed Ada. Ah, almost almost exclusively two stores I've shopped for that. I got some of it at um, Strawberry Sampler when we were there that one time. Uh -huh. And then uh, HodgePodge is where I got the other overdyed Ada. Um, okay. You can look at all the different types of overdyed Ada if you go to either Wichelt's, I think it's Wichelt's site, um, Remember when we were looking up your water? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it was Witchell, wasn't it, that I was on? And yes. you can look at all of them. The yeah. other thing I recommend, and I, I thought about this the other day, if you get a Hirshner's catalog, they have oh, they do. fabric in the center, and it's very accurate yeah, colors. Yeah, they do. And they have a lot of over-dyed uh, Ada, oh, and different do they? colored Ada oh. in there. So you can look at their variety. I didn't know uh, they had over-dyed in there. That's cool. So, um, just maybe the luck of the draw in the catalog you get because some of them are more yarn than cross stitch or puzzles and mm -hmm. games and but yeah and then what was the name of that shop there's 
another shop up near Canada that somebody told us about. Fox. If I think about it, I'll put it in the Dropbox. But another shop, somebody was telling us about when we were talking about getting 40 count uh, Verano. Remember that fabric we mm -hmm. were looking at? Yeah. And it was, it came up from several viewers. Okay. And it was right at the border between the United States and Canada somewhere. Yeah. Uh, but I'll, okay. I'll try to find it. Okay. I think they have a lot of fabric was the point that, that those people were making. Okay. Um, Louise, she wanted to know how to convert fabric. So, for example, if somebody calls for a 14 count Ada and you want to use linen, mm -hmm. what count linen? Okay. If you did we didn't we did we do a video where we explained that and I explained I explained how to determine the size piece of fabric you need. We didn't ever do a did you know on that? I think that was when we did the size piece. No, I don't think we did. No. Did you know? Okay. All right. But basically, okay. if you look at some of your older patterns, I did notice, maybe you did too, the newer patterns, a lot of them don't give you all of the breakdowns of the size you would need for the different count fabrics. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, they would say for 14 count. Right. I was just going to see if this one had it. And to show 16 her. and then 18 and then Next to each of those would be the linen equivalent. 14 would be the 28 count fabric because most people stitch over two. And then 16 would be 32 count and 18 would be 36 count. Yeah. Um, so that's how it works. If you're going to be stitching on 28 count, you would have the same dimensions as something that's given for 14 count um, if, you're if you're stitching over two threads. Right. Then if you stitch over one, then it would be half that dimension. So that's how it's usually expressed in a pattern. The easiest way, in all honesty, is to download a fabric app that you put in the count of the fabric, the number of stitches in your design, and how much margin you want around the outside. And it does the work for you, and it's so nice. Um, Yarn Tree has a fabric calculator, and then Stitching All the Night, is that the name of the one we use? Oh, uh, I think no. So. Really? Let me look. Cross Stitch Calculator, Stitching, stitching the, the Night, night away. away. Yeah. So, yeah. That's what, once you pull it up, oh, it's too bright for you to see, I'm sorry. I don't know if this one, let me turn the volume yeah. down on stitching it. Stitching the Night Away. Yeah. And then Yarn Tree. If you go to yarntree.com, they also have a. Uh, okay. You want to hold that up? I, I out in the light. <laughs> That's what they say in Pennsylvania Dutch country. There you go. <laughs> That's the app that we use. And it's just very basic information. We had this yeah, on a gadget course. gadget corner mm -hmm. one time. So. Yep. I'm constantly looking at that thing. Yeah. Just remember to hit done. Oh yeah, definitely do that. <laughs> <laughs> Deb bought it. Don't do it, garden. Deb. <laughs> I think I bought like a lot more yards and yards of fabric. It's okay, I'll use it. <laughs> it was but so funny. It was so funny because Stacy goes, I didn't realize this design was this big. <laughs> she, she was so cute. She wanted to tell them, I think this isn't right, but she wasn't quite sure what Hey, Deb that was, was a happy it. accident. It was. It was. Because it's just more fabric. It's okay. It's yeah. all good. It wasn't too it's short. Good. If it had been too short, that would That been, would be bad. Yeah. yeah. Then you'd be looking for a project. That, that's not a good accident. No. no. Mm -mm. Um, we had some people comment on the, the needles that we were talking about and, um, you know, having that, that ball at the end. And I found the same thing as what Patricia found, that it is difficult to get that. I like stitching with the needle, but the thing I don't like is when I want to hide my thread when uh -huh. I'm finished, uh -huh. it's very hard to get that ball under those threads. It's annoying. So that part of it I don't care for. I like actually stitching with it, but to hide it afterwards... That's not fun. Huh. So I did find the same problem that she found. I'm right with you, girl. So you must have tight stitches then, do you? I guess. I guess. I mean, yeah. I have no problem with any other needle, uh -huh. but with those, I do. The other thing, too, that I noticed is with the linen, um, it's quicker for me if I want to, you know, end my thread. 
using that ball needle, which is what I'm stitching with right now, actually. And you notice I can actually stitch in hand mm -hmm. with this needle on weeks. Yeah, wow. Weird. Yeah. Really weird. That is weird. I don't know why this needle affects that, but somehow the way it lays the thread for me is more even than if I'm using a regular needle. I'm sure it has something to do with me, not the needle or the fabric, but <laughs> um, <laughs> but I use the the pin stitch to start and stop, and then I don't have to hide it. So yeah. Um, Janice Kramer, she wanted to know what careers we both have experienced. Oh, gosh. Uh, mine will be a lot quicker than hers. <laughs> um, I'm a cosmetologist. I've worked in the same salon for 28 years. So before that, going like in high school, uh, I was a lifeguard and I taught swim lessons. And I worked we were at both a, lifeguards. Isn't that funny? Yeah, I, I did that for years um, and taught lessons. And I love that. I worked in a sub shop. Uh, but I work part-time as a cosmetologist and I love it. I love my clients. We have a salon. It's a country salon. It's not a walk-in salon. It's appointment only. So you really get to know your clients and they become like family. And I'm now onto my second generation, almost my third that I'm seeing come through the door, which is wonderful. So I just, I love it. Um, and I'm grateful that I was always able to stay home with my kids and I always wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. My only desire growing up, I was never career oriented like this one. <laughs> I only ever wanted to be a mom and a wife. That was it. I just wanted to stay at home and raise my family and be at home and take care of the house and, and I never was career oriented. But when my mom was passing away, she made me promise that I would go to school for something. She said, I don't care what it is, anything. Um, cause she knew obviously also that what your I just, desire was. yeah, she knew that. Yeah. And, um, she said, but just in case you have to take care of yourself, I just need yeah. to know that you'll be able to take care of yourself. Yeah. Um, and that's how that happened. And, and it's interesting because both Deb's parents were, um, had careers. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like she didn't, um, yeah, my mom was that they were both didn't in the, have a career. Her mom. No, my mom, she was in the Navy and then she put herself through, um, schooling to become a nurse and RN. And um, she was a fantastic nurse. Um, my dad worked for the railroad for 42 years. My grandfather, my dad's dad, worked for the railroad for his entire life. Um, so mm, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. My dad was in the service, and um, my mom was a nurse, like Deb's mom, RN, and. Mom stayed home with us until we were school age, and then she became a school nurse. So she had was the she same hours. Was she a school nurse? She was our area school nurse. She oh, okay. traveled. Okay. Yep. That would be the weirdest thing going to the nurse. Like, <laughs> Mom! <laughs> the funny thing was, I don't feel good. <laughs> the one time I actually had to see a nurse, I fell on the playground and cut Aww. my hand. And so they knew I would have to go to the hospital and get stitches. Aww. So they had to call mom that particular day. She was uh, at one of the high I think she was at the high school in our district. But anyway, they call her and she came over and picked me up. Aww. But it was like, oh man. It, it, I don't know about you, but my experience having my mom be a nurse was my mom was not a quick responder. She did not overreact to anything. Oh, no. So we no. could be sick, and if it lasted three days, we got some attention. If it was less than three days, we were fine. Right. S nothing got, Right. nothing over the top. Yeah. And whenever you needed a shot, did she bring it home yes. and do it? Yes! When so she, did my mom. She became a nurse for a private practice internal medicine in Tucson uh -huh. when we were in fourth grade. <laughs> and every time home came in yes. and she also did that when she was a school nurse because oh. she gave the injections at school okay she brought them home I and know. inoculated I even had blood taken at the dining room table one oh, time gosh. because she thought I had mono okay and so she was getting up early in the morning she said okay let's do this before I go I'll take the sample with me to work <laughs> but <laughs> you're going to school <laughs> <laughs> no no I didn't have to go to school I didn't feel good at all but oh man yeah so mom never did the bloodletting thing but she did do the inoculations mm. And, oh, I remember we got, this was still when they did smallpox vaccines, you know, like the water and dirt thing. <laughs> and uh, so they gave, mom gave all four of us our smallpox vaccine. Mm -hmm. I guess it was just Carol and I. We were due for it. 
and Carol's scabbed over, left a nice scar. Mine did nothing. So my mom oh, brought really? home another vaccine, went to town. Uh uh. Nothing. Oh man. So mom brought home another one. Boy, did she go to town. Oh. That one took no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I remember sitting there thinking, what did I do wrong that every time you do this, you make it hurt more? <laughs> Although I really did like my mom giving me shots because she was like quick draw McGraw. Oh, okay. She because she was also a diabetic, like a bad diabetic. She had to have insulin three times a day. Oh, that's pretty brutal. And um, so she was really good at giving shots. I mean, in and out before you even know you were stuck. And I also remember her teaching Brian and I because we had to know if she had a reaction. Yeah. Where she couldn't get to her medicine, we had to know how to give her a shot. Mm -hmm. And I remember we practiced on an orange. Yep. First. Yep. But then, bless her heart, I don't know how she did it. I would have passed out. She let us practice on her. And I remember, like, sticking in really slowly. <laughs> okay, Deb, you can go a little faster. Yeah. You can go a little... I would have been on the floor. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Speed her up, Deb. I'm about to hit the floor myself. Yes. <laughs> and you know what's weird? We had a Labrador growing up, Clementine. She was diabetic. Huh. And she had to have insulin. So did Adam at the end of his life. So it was the funniest thing because in the morning... In the kitchen, like Mama Clem, <laughs> shooting up in the kitchen. <laughs> Everybody get their medicine. That's funny. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Adam was my chocolate. Our first lab ever was a chocolate lab, and he was big, um, very tall. American lab, super tall, thirty some inches at the shoulder, and his head just. He walked to the table, and his head was yeah. over the kitchen he table. He was a small horse. Yeah, he was. Actually, he was almost the body size of a Dane. His legs weren't as long as a Dane, but his mm -hmm. body was as big as a Dane. Mm -hmm. um, but Yeah, he was a big boy. He, he did have diabetes the last uh, probably year and a half of his life, and he was so good about it. He just knew before dinner and before breakfast, he got his blood tested, mm -hmm. or no, urine tested, and then we got him a shot, but. Yeah. He was a sweetie pie. I felt really bad because my mom, she was the diabetic teacher and counselor for our area here for Lancaster County. And um, so she would travel yeah. and speak. And we, she asked me to come along with her when, when she had to speak in uh, Connecticut one time. That was okay. my, we, so we took the train to Connecticut. Oh, and it was awful. I remember one night my dad calling, we're in the hotel room, and Clem had an awful, um, awful diabetic reaction go I mean it was just and everything mom was telling him to do he was doing bless his heart but <clears throat> anyway Clementine ended up passing away oh while we were away in Connecticut and Clem was mom's dog I mean that was that was her girl that was so hard yeah mm. poor dad I know it was just it was bad all the way around but and Clem was I mean she was much older at that time you know mm -hmm. what I mean she wasn't like a puppy or yeah. anything but yeah. Still, it was just with mom not being able to be there. For sounds her, like a one off, you know, to have that kind of reaction all of a sudden. It was you know? awful. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's do a giveaway for okay. everybody who's hung out with us this long. All right. This is nice. This was this was a pattern that Liz has um, a Barbara Anna design. Live, love, and meow. <laughs> so cute. Um, we can make it into a little pillow. And I like Very the. Cute. Um, I like the Quaker side to that. I know. That's what attracted me to it. It's adorable. Yeah. So if any of you are interested in this and you've stuck around with our Floss Friends videos, um, how about if you mention something about Meow in your comment? <laughs> there, that'd be fun. That's cool. I like how creative people get with their comments, too. Yes. That's fun. So, what did Liz do? Liz <laughs> actually always liked science and nature, so I was pretty determined as a youngster that I was going to be a physician. Um, but my parents, mom had her RN degree, dad went into the service without school, uh, just high school, Okay. but then was ushered into when the Army and Air Force used to be the Army Air Corps, and they were combined services. Mm -hmm. When they split them, they didn't have enough officers to manage both corps, oh. so they took the cream of the enlisted crop and put them through officers training school okay so they asked dad if he would like to join the officers training program yeah. well yeah <laughs> so he did and he went into the air force 
So dad became an officer, but not through one of the academies or through a four-year program, but then he had to get his four-year degree. So then he went back to school and got his, I went to his graduation when I was six years oh, old. Oh, really? Yep. Oh. That was his, I can't remember if that was his undergraduate or his master's. I think it was his undergraduate. So he graduated from uh, University of Nebraska, and then he did his um, graduate work okay. uh, after that. But um, because of the way they both went about their careers, none, nobody we knew really had any experience with college or going to school or selecting a program oh. or how to get information about what's available for okay. careers. Um, so everything was left up to our high school counselor, and all they pretty much just said, what do you have an interest in? You know, a lot of people change after they get to school, so really what school do you want to go to? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so once I got to college and I realized, A, how expensive it was, I thought, okay, I like medicine, but I don't think I want to pay for 12 years of college. Um, so, oh my goodness, it is Are you kidding raining. me? It is raining? Oh my word. See, you thought it was funny looking out the window? This is Pennsylvania. Seriously. Isn't that unbelievable? It's not even, it wasn't even supposed to rain today. Not that I saw. Hey, hey. I'd like to say it's the neighbor's sprinkler, but I know better. He's not home. I um, can't believe it. Ooh, I hope my windows are open in the truck. <laughs> Want to go check? Oops. <laughs> Let me think. I'm trying to think if they are. Um, so anyway, I made a change. And I decided to go into business because I thought I could actually work in business in healthcare. Yeah. And that would be really fun. Yeah. I could stay near all the things I think are interesting mm -hmm. and have a lot of options then too. I wouldn't have to stay in healthcare if I didn't want to. So I did that. I got my degree in um, Bachelor of Science in Business Administration. My focus was marketing. And our internship was really on the cutting edge. We did an internship in marketing for nonprofits which was perfect for me having an interest in hospitals because at the time, again, dirt and water, hospitals did not advertise. They did not give out pamphlets. They did not put ads on TV. They did not have mailings. Oh, I wish we'd go back to the no oh, ads I on know. TV. That's I mean, awful. Nothing for a hospital mm. was promoted. It was considered a charitable organization and operated that way. So I was on the beginning of the how do we let customers know that we exist how do we position ourselves against another hospital mm -hmm. and went that way with my education but then I married someone who lived in Maine and I had no idea how limited career choices would be when you get into the rural areas of Maine so I ended up my first job was substitute teaching for two years in the high school and elementary schools in the area and then I worked for GH Bass and I did my I applied my marketing to um, the shoe industry and then when I had my daughter I didn't want the commute and I didn't want the time the hours that went into it mm -hmm. so I found a job that was advertised in healthcare with an agency that managed primary care health centers that were federally funded so that got me in the door in healthcare and from there I went into hospital administration and actually spent a good number of years recruiting physicians to areas and setting up their practices with the hospitals and also recruiting students for the teaching hospitals. So that was fun. And then I finished up making all this time I used a lot of computers because I'm a geek and did, did a lot of programming and coding and I finished as a as an associate software developer for a software and engineering firm. Uh, they ran and, well, they actually developed a software program for nuclear power plants uh, to manage their sites. And so that was fun. I didn't work so directly with that as I did start a new endeavor. Do, of all things, this is, again, dirt and water. Oh my gosh, this is too much fun. <laughs> Back in the day when you did not have a handheld computer or device, they were just coming into that. That is dirt and water. It is. And they had come out. <laughs> Hewler Packard had a little compact handheld yes. device that I developed Microsoft 
applications for, for doing things like managing your inventory, uh, taking care of your products when you're a salesperson on the road, and then consolidating all of the supplies and things on a mainframe. And um, it was just, it was a lot of fun. It was the geeky side of me and I had so much fun. And, uh, and then I ended up in surgery and became disabled. So end of career story. Um, but start a very, very fun habit. My stitching became first and foremost in what I can do now. There you go. So I was very grateful that I loved doing something like this when I had my wings clipped. <laughs> <laughs> my wings got clipped, then I could stitch more. <laughs> but growing up in the service, I really was a nomad. I just, if it, two years went by and I wasn't doing something fun, and traveling to see something, I would get really antsy. Yeah. You'd have to go do something. So. <laughs> well, Would we'll you? have to save some of our questions for next time. Yeah. And you've got to get to the fair. No. It stopped raining, though. That's good. Maybe it was just one of those weird afternoon showers that went by. Yeah. It's like, it's fair time. We have to do something. Yeah. <laughs> we have yeah. to rain at some point. Yeah. It's like when it's... um. Mm -hmm. Uh, farm show in the winter. Oh, usually we have the worst weather for farm show, but last year, beautiful. It was. It was unbelievable. Beautiful. So hopefully we'll have good good weather this year too. That'd be great. Almost got it knocked so. out. Still Yay. a little bit more. A little bit more of the purple to go <laughs> <clears throat> before I get to the other stuff. All right. That was fun. Perfect. Well, thanks for hanging out with us. Yeah. Glad you got to come I by. I am glad I got to come by also. My husband is too, because he got a trim while she was here. He got his hairs cut. <laughs> oh, I won't say all four of them. No, oh. I will not. <laughs> Don't kill me. He, he does have more than four I didn't hairs. say it. Like five. Five. <laughs> oh, no. You're not supposed to tell, right? Like what color my hair actually is. Oh, gosh. Logan, her son, said to her one time, Mom, how do you do that with Liz's hair? He, he actually gave you a piece that I love Liz's hair. I like how you did this lighter part here in the front. It was so cute. <laughs> I said, honey, I didn't do that. God did. <laughs> My mom grayed this way too. It was really funny. I love that. I thought it I was love funny that. Yeah. said that. I thought, yeah. oh, that's great. Yeah. People do pay good money for that. Yes. Just yes. saying. I get to keep mine in my pocket. Yes. All right. Well, thank you very much yes. for joining us. Thank you. And we will see you again before long. Yes. And until next time, share, share the joy of needlework. Work. See ya. Bye-bye.